finishing up their camps. Vi did finish hers first. I believe that Kha'Zix stopped. No, Vi just has, you know, she stopped faster. She's going to go ahead and go into a race and move onwards. Ari and Anivia duking it out back and forth. Oh, Death Sentence going down. Dash going in. Brahms walking away. Tristana jumping out. Trying to get the... the they're, Tristana's probably going to re-engage, but sets back off. Ari's Kha'Zix coming in from behind him. Night Flamin' of Nibia. Flash is going off. Turret dies. Even first blood goes Kha'Zix with the Deadly Claws. And, and then Nibia will survive due to the Ignite, but she also had her eggs, so she was safe in order to take the turret for Kha'Zix to get out. Bot side pushing it forward, trying to keep as much pressure as she can. Kha'Zix and Vi, you know, trying to keep the experience going together. Interesting, Doran. Oh, oh Death is going off another turret. He will take a turret shot. And very good plays, good zoning out of the bot side. You know, a ranged melee versus a double range, it will make it very difficult for them early game. But with Kha'Zix getting the early first blood, Kha'Zix is not, you know, as strong as he used to be. But later on, he will become a monster. Um, so as he's going through, he's going to go ahead and push forward. Now, with Anivia, when she uh, when she went back from her body, she went ahead. She's going towards what appears to be an early catalyst, which is not a bad pick. I personally prefer the tier. Q going off onto the Braum. There you go. Three stacks. Three stacks. Flash away. Try to get the attack off. Lance away. Death Sentence takes on the Thresh. Back off. Like helping out. More stacks coming down. Three stacks, not four. Try to do what they could. Great play by Thresh. It's safe. Vlad and Lulu just, you know, playing a sustained game up top, living what they can. And Nivia is trying to, you know, try to test out the Ari, who got the double Dorans and a lot of pots. Now, pots will help early game. Vlad is just getting a beat down. Yes, he's out of weakness because he uses health, but he is a late game monster when he gets farmed up. And since they both have teleport, Lulu is to be able to stick with him no matter what. I'm also surprised about that CS discrepancy right now because Vlad's farming really well with his E, and uh, that's like a, um, it's kind of like a. It's, it's interesting because Lulu should kind of win that early because Lulu can bur bully him out with uh, Glitter Lance and Help Pick setting it up on minions. But Vlad is just killing this lane right now. So, like, that's a, that's a 10 CS difference right there. Um, let's see here. Just, um, I want to talk about mid lane mainly here right now. Uh, who do you think's got the better hand right now? I, I'm personally leaning towards the Ari because I'm a huge Ari fan, but also I'm a huge Anivia fan too. So, um, like, who do you think's got this right now? Well, in the game, Ari has the advantage. Anivia is very, not so, not say weak, but she doesn't have her full potential until 6. Granted, a lot of people don't. But Ari is strong no matter what. She has high mobility. She has high damage. She does true damage. Her E is a passive BFG. I mean, she does really well. Now, one thing I did notice about the Vladimir and the Lulu top, Lulu's trying not to cast her abilities. She probably does not have the good mana reading rooms. Thresh is going around. Death Sentence. I'm out of the Braum. Double shot. I'm excited to overextend just a little bit, but he's going to back off. Really well trade down for the blue side, you know, poking down the Thresh, using what they can. Thresh, you no, know, interesting enough, a lot of people, I see Thresh is starting the coin instead of a shield. Uh, he, Lucian dashing in, trying to get that early poke. But, because it's really hard, I noticed, with the Thresh to last hit with the Q, because you don't get the execute damage. Now, see, with Nivia, when she hit her six, ultimate E, ultimate E, double damage. It gets her more pressure. Now, see, the jungle is rotating around the mid lane. So they're trying to do something. They have wards. They have vision. They're not sure what their plan to be is. Lulu is going to go ahead and burn her teleport from backing. She's going to start off with a blasting wand. No sustain. More damage. Vlad is just going to stay. She may be headed towards an abyssal, but uh, you have no idea. It's just it's player discrepancies how to go. Ari with a 43 CS. You know, go ahead and ult in. Misses her taunt. Ignite going off and ults it out. Ignite's going out. She's going really low. It's a chase. She's going to walk it off. Come back and forth, wait for it, and Nivia's not going to play any chances. She can go ahead and back off. Ari with the engage, force down. Death Sentence is going way far to the right. Going down, cutting their losses. Two stacks, three stacks. He's going to back off. The heal's going to be burned. He's going to miss the Q. It was a great trade for the Summoner spell. Safe disengage from the Braum with the help behind, and go back and forth. I think mainly why Lu uh, Lucian and Thresh are trying to be so aggressive right now is because when Kha'Zix came in for that gank earlier, um, I believe uh, Tristana flashed forward to try to um, get forward. Yeah, that's, that's Tristana flash. So the, they know Tristana's flash is down right now. So that's why they're trying to be so aggressive. And that's why earlier you saw Thresh just literally just walk past the minion wave and try to hit that hook because they're trying to take advantage of that. Well, also on top of that, Lucian, or Lucian naturally bullies Tristana. 
Tristana has a really weak early game compared to Lucian because he's able to pull out six, seven, eight, maybe almost ten auto attacks in time Tristana has four. So, I mean, if you master the art of using your double shot, you'll be good. Now, sadly, they could not do a Braum Lucian bot lane because of the stacks. Instant stun no matter what. Kha'Zix is going to go ahead and steal the red buff, but he's going to be caught out because Vine notices it. Lulu Glitter Dance coming down. Oh, all oh, the fail flash. Dire mode initiated. <laughs> oh, using good science with the lights, I'm going to get good pokes on both sides. Tristana is dangerously low. Braum is trying to use his soul stacks. You know, to give it a little bit of health and a little bit of sustain. That was good ward placement on the red side. Dead Sentence coming down in the flash. Oh, he's going to flash up the wall into the wall. Heal is prog, flashing over. to Lucian, double tap. He will be down. As two, right now it's two for one red side. Ari going ahead and getting the Phoenix Tone Dog. Spear, she's going to rush forward to DFG to give her that early assassination damage. Um, Anivia did finish with her uh, Catalyst, so she will have good sustain in game as long as she doesn't burn too much mana. Ari does have a blue buff, so her soul stealing stacks. Will be great. She's one of my favorite champions. I love her to death. Lulu still with the blasting one. Now Vlad got the typical um, Hextech revolver. It's perfectly good. Tristana got with the early BF sword and with the Dorn Blade start. Both sides are good. But Lucian with the bonus gold has boots. So it would be able to help him out a lot. Okay. Uh, sir. Um, so uh, I know it's a little hard to see on the screen, you guys. But uh, right now... Um, CS is leaning towards um, stud muffins right now. Um, that top top lane is leading uh, 68 to 45, and uh, right now in the mid lane it's uh, 50 to 59. Oh, and that right now Vi is coming in for a gank. Um, oh, and then Kraus is counter gank. Glad with the ultimate landing on both of them. That's most likely a very dead buy. Oh, Lulu with the ultimate though countering. Oh, and that's Glad up, and Kraus might be able to get out. Oh, and Lulu with the double kill. Oh, Agnivia popped out. Tristana, uh, fresh one up top. Gives a kill to Art, and that would put him even high. That was a really well played by the combo for the Lulu and, and the uh, the Vault Breaker miss. However, on the Vi, they still were able to work together. The one combo underneath the turret. This is what you're talking about earlier. Great trust in each other. Able to know what they can do. Putting it together and lay, being able to lay your hands or your lives in the hands of your allies. That is what it takes to be a team. You do not see that in the solo queue, and that's why you're stuck in bronze half the time. Mainly, one of the things I want to point out back on that fight was um, right when the 2v2 broke out, um, right when uh, Vi and uh, Lulu started pulling back to their uh, tower, um, literally damage went straight to Vi. Ka was started focusing on Vi, uh, Vlad started focusing on Vi, and then Lulu was pretty much safe. So all she had to do was just ult and... Ta -da. Pretty much it. So um, the single target focus right there kind of helps for Ka because I mean you know isolation damage, but at the same time focusing one target and well you've got a support top pretty much. So with that with that wild growth it, it helps a little bit and allowed Vi to play a counter player. Right now we got a fight breaking out here in the bot lane. Ka trying to go in for a gank, but uh, Thresh and Lucian pretty much showing them the door, and by the door I mean the flag. <laughs> All right now. We've seen a lot now. Map control is the red team's right now main priority. As Thresh went back, he finished off a side stone. He went ahead and switched to a sweeper. Same thing with the Bromps. The sweeper's not going to come out late. But if you notice, every player. Oh, Ari going off. Now stun with a Q. Tom going off. And those. And if you will flash away, Q will not come back and hit her. And Ari will just use her ult to one of her charges as well. It was. Very good flash. It was really nice of both of them. Now, once again, going back to what I was talking about before, each lane has two wards. Each one, you know, they have a total of like 10, 15 wards coming out all over the map at all times. So they know what they're doing. They know what they're going to be careful. They want to know where the jungler is to counter it. I was going to say, uh, Purple Side also has a lot of wards right now. Lulu's got two wards. Vi's got two wards. Even Lucian has two wards. So these guys are, um, Stud Muffins are definitely looking to make map control a main priority. They might potentially be looking for an early dragon right now, but um, right now with the pink ward placement down um, down on a uh, purple side, uh, not purple, I like to call that the moon brush, but, uh, and right now that's the only purple side placement. There's not really any direct view on dragon right now, but I believe those blue, those blue wards um, are going to be expiring very shortly, so they're definitely looking forward to um, going for dragon right now. And I believe uh, Vlad's teleport is still down for it looks like maybe another 20, 30 seconds while Lulu's is up. So, like, if they're looking forward to it, this is it's going to break out into a huge fight, potentially. Now, Lulu, well, we thought about getting an early, um, 
What's I forgot what uh, Abyssal? Yeah, no, not the early bus in the, uh, the Abyssal scepter. She's actually going for a death cap rush instead, which is very odd considering she's down in CS. Vlad with the ultimate flash coming down, she's gonna go ahead and use. It will not get away. Oh, it will not. She will be shut down and she'll be killed. That was that will put Vlad an even further ahead. Even though she does have the higher kill lead, it will not be enough for the sustain against the Vladimir with the 20% spell vamp. Kha'Zix sitting around the mid lane trying to see if he can figure out something to do. You know, trying to get a little kill on Ari, who is very powerful right now. 107 CS, one kill. She does not have her main power strike items yet, but she will be getting stronger. Right now, if you look, you go, she has 1,000 gold right now on her, so she will be able to get her needlessly large rod here pretty soon. Lulu's teleport is down, even, so they will, blue side will be able to make a move towards the dragon. Ari is rotating down the bot side, hopefully, you know, trying to utilize the fact that, hey, even though our Lulu's teleport's down, we might as well be able to get this done as fast as we can. Kha'Zix pushing up the mid lane while Anivia is gone. That way Ari can lose on the XP. Now as Vilge is coming out, we are also seeing the junglers um, going out for the expect items. Vi went ahead and get the early Moby Boot. She's going more gank oriented. While Kha'Zix is going to farm more because he already has Zelda Lizard. Anivia is trying to finish up a row as fast as possible. You know, the faster you get it. It's one of those items, the earlier you get it, the better you get it. The more utility it's going to help out, even though it does fall off and does not scale as much as it used to back in, what, Season 2, Season 3? Yeah. And so, and she, looks like she will be getting a blue buff from the Kha'Zix, which is very helpful towards her, because she is the second most Amanda Hunter player in the game. Q stocks going out. Death Sentence going to be landing on the Braum. Light Slinger hit on Tristana. The shield will be coming up. Two stacks. And then they're just going to back it up and say, no, we don't need to pick a fight right now. A lot of roaming coming, trying to make out. They're trying to make a play happen here. Red Team. Stud muffins, they really want to do something. Ari still with their blue buff, should be coming out. Vault Breaker coming up from the queue, just gonna take a couple CIs to say, nah, nah, nah. I, I'm not gonna go with it, just messing around. She's walking through a lot of wards, but she has a feeling she knows it's warded, so they're playing it safe. Vlad finishing up his Will of the Ancients. Kha'Zix getting brutalized the early damage, trying to, you know, pick off who he can as fast as he can. One thing I do notice, it is very, you know, for assassin junglers, you're down a tank. Because mostly you have tanky tanky junglers, and they will take away because they're having kills. Want to go? Ball breaker, slow and battery coming down. And Nivia will be popped. Ultimate's coming down. Oh wait, they forgot the result. They're gonna do much damage. Ultimate coming down. Half health. Nah, she's dead. Get the kill will be going towards Ari. Kazakh's gonna ult in, but it's not gonna do any much. Oh, ultimate coming down. Flash. And we will hit on Lucia. He's gonna leap in. Evolve spikes coming down. Oh, the lantern pulling away. Two stacks under the turret. It was very well played from the red team. This Thresh knows what he's doing. They know they have really well synergy. And now with the ultimate stuff going down, Ari's going to rotate down. And she's going to say, no, 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 you're not going to get that ward. It's going to be mine. Vi is also there too. Vi is also there too. But even though their ultimates are down, they're still powerful. Lucian going to go ahead and use his drive by to poke down the, the minions. You know, give them a little safe back. <laughs> a, little, a little safe back and a little leeway. That way they can come back and the lane will be all right. Top turret is falling dangerously low right now. So Vlad is going to try to push it out as much as he can, and that way you leave his team open to teleport down and take a dragon. I think Lucy's looking to do dragon right now. Yes, they, well, they are looking to see run dragon, but they do not have wards in that area. So they don't want to play it too strong right now. And it, it's a big risk. Ari did get her needlessly large rod. She's very close to getting her DFG. Lucian and Tristana with early IEs. So they're looking for the same build, which is very nice because they're both relatively simple. Wall coming out, flashing over. And she's just gonna sit there. Yeah, you know, she's gonna poke him down. They're not gonna do it. Vlad's still pushing it. Transmorgify coming down onto the Vladimir, trying to keep him from doing as much as he can. He finally does take the turret, so this open very well played, keeping Ari so she can't come up and help. Lulu's gonna back off. Vlad's gonna head towards the mid lane. They have a very strong siege comp, if you notice. Yeah. And Nivi has really good range. Tristana has amazing range. So what I think their main focus is is not going for kills, but going for objectives. While Red Team has a really good kill team locking down. So it'll be mostly, it's going to be based on whatever outpays more in the end. Ari ultimate down with Foxfire. And she doesn't want to get caught out because she's in a good position, but it's also a dangerous position at once. They are ahead by just a little bit. They don't want to waste what they have left. Vlad is just pushing top lane. He's being a monster right now. He's completely taking advantage of the He's taking advantage of the low sustain from the Lulu. And Vi is going to come up. They're going to try to make a play happen here. I mean, he is a monster. 121 CS, one kill. But with the plays that Lulu and Vi have made earlier, they're going to try to make something out of it. They do have the minion advantage. Ball breaker coming in. He's going to go ahead and get hit. The Sultan better come out. Stacks. He's there. He does ultimate. Go ahead and goes in the pool. He can't do anything right now. He's running to West. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
and he's just gonna fall right now to Lulu, giving her four and one. Meanwhile, with his knowing that the jungle is playing, blue side is gonna go ahead and make the advantage, get the dragon. They're gonna take a thrash. She's gonna come up and say peekaboo, and he's like, oh, okay, Lucian's gonna go ahead and should Ari's coming in a very good position. They're coming down. Exhaust going down. Shana, she's flashed away from the fight. Olivia's coming in low on mana. The Ari's gonna fall ahead and fall, and they're gonna run away. The bomb shield walking the wrong way. Lucian double tap. Well, you have to get a death sentence. He's gonna miss. Lulu teleported down, Whimsy coming in, Light Slinger will go ahead and take down Braum. I'm very close. Even though it was an even fair trade, yes, they got the dragon, which is a thousand gold, but also they won a team fight. Now they're gonna rotate by it and make it even more towards their favor to take a turret because they have they are forced to leave. Shana's gonna run back as fast as she can, but I'm afraid it won't be enough. Um, I was also gonna point out there, I don't think that was necessarily a miss shield. Like I think Braum was trying to sit there in front of Ari and uh, prevent her from throwing out uh, throwing out an orb because uh, Ka was kind of low, and it was potentially with with the uh, with the DFG Ari now running around and running up. I think she was potentially trying to. Uh, Braum was trying to you know like I'm gonna die here. I may as well make sure that none of my teammates are gonna die here as well. Playing like a true support. Yeah, that is true. But if he, but Kazakh um, had the cleanup on or Ari, uh, Nivy had the cleanup on Ari. So if he put the shield the back way, he would have been able to block the attack. And so he may have gotten out. But hey, it happens. It's good. They're still even. They got a good trade. It's perfectly fine. Vlad is rotating towards mid lane because he took out most of everything. Top. Kaz is going to take the red. And they're trying to get the timers to go. And he's just poking away. So much sustain with the Will of the Ancients. And he's going towards his Zonias. I don't know how to build Vlad that well, but I believe that's a good choice. But I prefer Will of the Ancients. Oh, Volbreak going to come down. And oh, Ari dashing in. And Volbreak coming down. I, Vlad is really low. Ari coming out. Kaz is going to go ahead and try to get the cleanup on her. And he does get it with the Void Spikes. They come back. Vi drop, Vanus reload, stun will stop the ball breaker. Flash Q will miss. Let's go now. Oh, we come back, ball stop battery. And Nevia will clean it up. S Team Spirit all the way. Now, I, <laughs> I, was, I was completely honestly expecting the reset there, but I forgot. Oh, I was forgot. Yeah, I was expecting the reset as well. Now we're coming in. Death Stannis will let out Stana, but he's not going to want to go ahead and go in because he has no way to fall back. He's going to flash out, not take any chances. Kha'Zix now leveled up his wings, so now he will have the reset. Vlad teleport down bot, but it will not be enough to save the turret. He's going to try to clean up. Drive by hitting him right in the face. He's going to tank it. <coughs> he dropped Daniel Street low. The hill will be proxed, but he may not be able to get out alive. All it takes is one Q. Will it get another dash away? I mean, Kha'Zix was like, hey, I'm going to try to help you, but he can't. Calling for help down the bot side. They're going to go ahead and push it. And um, <coughs> this is a really well played. DMG now on the R. Face of the mountain on Thresh with a side stone. Keep the pink wards. Now... Lucian is getting a Brutalizer. He's going to build towards the, um, I forgot the name of the item, <laughs> the active. Yomu's Ghostblade. Yomu's Ghostblade. And if you're finishing your row with Skullpan Boots, now Braum may be getting a Frozen Heart, but I also see a lot of them get a Iceborne Gauntlet. So a it's hard to tell with, um, I was going to say it's hard to tell with um, just the Glacial Shield in there, but um, right now I would say... Uh, Definitely, uh, definitely, AD is leaning towards Lucian right now because I probably don't know how much gold does he have right now? Um, uh, oh, we got a fight going on right here. Oh, sorry about that. Um, he's like diving on Ari, he's trying to miss hit a basic, and then is gonna walk away with subpar 50 HP. Just some, just some misclicks there, I'm assuming. And Kaz trying to come in on the back, but I think a huge miscommunication there from uh, Blue Side right there. Thinking that Cobb might have gone in there potentially hoping for a reset, but uh, I don't think he's going to get in it there. Um, right now, Nivea back. Um, and as I was trying to say on earlier, before I spaced out and missed, com almost completely missed that fight. Um, right now, uh, AD Carry uh, uh, is leaning heavily towards Lucy, and Lucy is going to be finishing that Ghost Blade soon. Um, I'm more of a fan of uh, just gonna going Infinity Edge into uh, IE, but I mean Infinity Go. Um, Infinity, because uh, Lucian's more of an AD caster, so he's going to be getting those double shots, but he's not going to be really getting those double shots much as well, so Yomu's is nice, but it's not really uh, the best necessarily good item choice, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I, mean if you probably got, if, I don't know if you got anything. Well, I think, well, with the Yomu's, it's a good active use with the ultimate, because his ultimate is based off attack speed. Now he's going to throw out a Lantern to give Lucian a safe way, because, hey, he was in dangerous position, but they didn't even know he was there, so it's all good. Now with the now we're heading towards you know mid late game coming up here. Gold is still relatively even. Both sides you know are having the control is what they can. Blue side has more around the Baron. Now they don't really necessarily have an early Baron technique without Kha'Zix evolving his Q first. So they're gonna have to be very careful what to do. Now 
Considering that uh, red side has a strong team fight, Flash Charm going out onto the left. He's going to be pulling it out. He pops his ultimate out beforehand. He flashes away. Lucian's going to be using his ultimate. Will not be enough. Lots of stuns. Braum getting three people for the follow up. Q. 12 will fight. We'll follow Tristana. They're going to be chasing. Defensive charms. Kazakh's going to leap in. Void spikes. You're doing damage. He's going to get a reset. Tristana reset. Reset party. He's going all over. Everyone's getting picked off. Lucian picking off the Tristana. Going, going. He will fall to the Kazakhs. That'll be a five for one trade off. They're going to be able to push ahead, get the turrets. <laughs> Very well played team fight, spreading out the team as much as can, using the resets, picking off who they can. They're gonna be able to get this turret. They're gonna try to push towards the inhibitor. If not, Dragon is spawning within 20 seconds, 30 seconds, so they will be able to rotate and get to it if they don't want to take the chances. I was gonna say, um, MVP of that fight was definitely Braum with that ultimate. Uh, he got, he, he kind of hit the people in the back. He blew it a little late, but um, for that original, um, for Vi, uh, he got he got Vi stuck in Anivia's ultimate, and I believe Anivia was able to get off one more E as well. So, um, so definitely uh, Braum getting stuck on the uh, loud Kha'Zix for the reset because Kha'Zix hopped in to, uh, to get the assist on Anivia, and then it was loud to get the reset popped in again. So it's all a party. So MVP of that fight was definitely Braum with that ultimate. It's a very well placed ultimate. Taking advantage of the recently won team fight, they're going to go ahead and grab a dragon. They're going to do what they can. They're now 5k gold ahead. They haven't had a chance to go back and buy. Ari is probably going to try and take this blue buff, but Vi may be mean and not let her have it. Now, with the, with the items coming out, Vi does is going to be building towards a Warden's Mail, uh, probably towards a Randuin's to help her keep on team fights. Ari's going to go ahead and head build towards that Death Cap. So is uh, Nivia just finished hers with the team fight. Hex Shrinker going down on the Cosmics because, as I mentioned before, Red Side does have a lot of magic damage. There's a very well counter build. Vlad may have been falling, but he's 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 hanging in there. Tristana going for the Infinity, or not the Infinity Edge, the Static Shiv, which is very strange build. It's really good. I mean, yeah, you get the little extra wave clear with the the crit chance, but Phantom Dancer, you know, it's overall better in my opinion. It's just more expensive. And Lucian has finished off his Yoma's Ghost Blade, still with level one boots. Keep that in mind. So he's relying on the active Ghost Blade. 212 CS, 213. He's putting in there. Mom Royale is finished on the Kha'Zix. So he will get bonus damage. This will be low. He's expecting to be low. He's expecting to die. He wants to dish out as much damage. Red team rotating up towards the Baron. Trying to get a little control on it. Blue side just going to rotate. Try to catch somebody off as much as he can. Lantern and the Flash. Oh, and Nivea Flash with the wall. Lucian drive by coming out. He's going to get melted with the exhaust. Team fight. Braum getting everybody shut down on the amazing Lulu ultimate. This team fight is now in. Tristana safely in the back doing damage. Cute little girl doing massive damage all over the place. Double kill. To reset after reset. Now, they're able to take the choices. Now, they can do the quick baron because they're already there. And they have no one to push for the inhibitor. So they're just trying to make up their mind. They're wasting time, but they're trying to do it. They're saying, okay, we're going to go for the top turret. And they're going to go. Uh, gonna be, uh, they're going to do a split push here where Vlad's going to push mid and uh, Kha'Zix and Braum are going to push... Um, they're just going to push that top lane, and they're definitely going to get that top tower. It's no question. Um, I also want to point out that uh, Vlad, I believe, hit a... Uh, he definitely hit a four-person ult. Um, I I think uh, Ari, or um, whoever caught that charm to the face... Uh, Nidia ch caught, that, caught that charm to the face, definitely. But um, I believe Vlad hit a four-person, I think a five-person ultimate, and was able to just get in there with his E and then and then pull instantly. And like well, I literally just watched those health bars drop. So that was that was really well played on Vlad's part as well. They're gonna take that top turret and they're just gonna walk it on. They're just gonna walk back. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, also as uh, one of my colleagues was mentioning, as I said it in the fight, Tristana was in the back. She was completely fine. Nobody could get to her. Ari's gonna go ahead and pick off and, and Ivia, whose egg is on, but she, oh, she gets tons of damage versus now. Oh, she's gonna walk out with less than 50 health. Ignite coming out on the Ari. She's gonna stay alive. Wow. This is, a, this is an action packed game, ladies and gentlemen. This is a really well thought out game. Now, Blue Side does have the advantage, but Ari is just trying to pick off who she can whenever they're alone. She's trying to keep it together. She wants to have a good advantage because right now, the Baron is the big control right now as we're headed towards the late game. Kha'Zix will be able to clean up. I may He may involve his ultimate. A lot of people do that. But um, if he does get his Q, he will have a very good Baron secure. And they're just... And so that's what their team is focusing on. Now, they have a lot of um, team comp you know, positions. They can split push, but they have mobility. They can kite. They can keep together. They're able to do a lot of things. 
Now, Vi able to get into the back line, trying to keep locked down, Tristana isn't able to do that because they have mobility. They can block Vi's Vault Breaker from getting using the Assault and Battery. And she will not be able to use her Denting Blow procs because they have nobody to follow up with it. Ari's trying as much as she can, but she's getting locked down. So this and is, caught and caught out at the same time, but it's it's not so much caught out. Now, as we're going with this, Bills are finishing up, they're getting the late game items. Now, they're gonna go ahead with Vlad utilizing his teleport, who is up, by the way. He's gonna split push top lane while they're gonna have a four man mid. And along Lulu, who does also has a teleport up, she has to stick with Vlad. And she will not win an engagement against Vlad. Dragon is up in two minutes. So, blue side is gonna utilize that, have Vlad push up the top side and rotate down by, push it up. Now, they're all gonna come up and try to meet Vlad, but they have to make the decision. Have Lulu go up there, or has somebody else go up there? Oh, they're also getting some very nice ward placement right there. Yes, there also is very defensive ward placement. There is, it is very key. Vlad is now getting his Spirit Vistage for the 20% healing. So this will be, you know, it's, 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 cata not catastrophic, it's, um, I'm sorry, chaotic. It's a very chaotic game. Team fights are all over the place. That is what Blue Side is utilizing. They're using the lockdown against them. Like, let's say everybody goes on a one person. Well, he's going to fly away. And then everybody's going to come in and collapse on him while they're focusing on the one guy. And then they're all going to just be melted off by the resets and resets and resets. Now they're realizing, hey, Vlad's staying top lane. We got to go up there. But they're pushing by. They have to choose the losses. They have to pick their battles. If they pick a bad fight, they're going to lose the game. I was going to say, uh, Blue Side is playing this rather strategically right now, just using the minions to their advantage. Vlad didn't even, Vlad didn't even go past the, the ward they have on uh, on that bush over there, um, using their wardage very well. Um, that's actually the first, uh, one, something I wanted to point out. That's the first ward I've seen on uh, their red side in a while. They've been trying to keep, uh, they've been trying to keep that Blue Side locked down. They don't need to necessarily, oh, oh, getting caught out. Kha'Zix's going definitely down on and it's coming back over. Ari's gonna flash away. The EQ damage is massive. And it's gonna flash away. He's gonna kite and the Panther Box is gonna keep him safe. They're gonna be perfectly fine. And Vlad just in there. The heal did do the save. Ari, Todd, catching him out. 20 dead. DFG. Man, uh, not DFG. <coughs> Death Sentence is gonna land on the bomb. He's gonna QA. Lucian say, no, 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 no. I'm out. No, I'm not gonna fight this anymore. Oh, and they, tons of damage coming out from the uh, Nivea onto the Ari. Tons of shields coming out within the face of the mountain and the help picks. This will put this will put the blue side in a very in a very strong position right now. They could have taken the blue buff. I don't know if they did. I didn't see it. But now with the dragon up, red side can barely contest it. So they're gonna try to do it completely as much as they can. Now I'm also noticing a lot of Oracle's um, um, trinkets coming out. Now I miss Oracle's elixir. It was my favorite item back in the day, and um, you know it's 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 yeah. It makes things a lot harder. Now, Lucian with the cooldown boots, he's going to try to utilize his E dash as much as possible as spells. Blue side's going to start with the dragon. It is, however, where the red team's going to come with the contest. Oh, and Ivy is printed out. Death Sentence is going to miss. Ultimate, oh, flash with the wall. And she's going to get transformed by Ultimate coming down, landing on. Nivia gets hit. Egg Nivia turns around. Tristana in the back. This is trying to save her teammate's life. She's going to be fine. Reset's coming out. Kaz explain. Mario leaping all over the place. The Q is coming out. This is a double kill. Tristana. Hey, come on, Kaz, do the leap. Flash, triple kill, Tristana! Dragon is still alive. No minions to be able to push. They have the ace. This is a third team fight one. Yeah, they're gonna push it out. I, in my, my opinion, they should go for the Baron because they have no minions to be able to push. But Ignivia is down. They're gonna try to poke down the turret as much as they can, but they have no tank with enough health. They should just go do Dragon right now. Well, right now, Dragon will be a safe bet, but they're waiting on the minions. The death timers are still about 10, 20 seconds. So they do have time, but it will not be enough. Now realizing this, they're going to head back and rotate towards Dragon's Fight Award. Vlad's going to teleport top, utilize it, protect it. Less gold for the red team, give it even more head. They're at a 10k gold lead right now. They're at a safe position. They're utilizing their team fights and their strengths and their weaknesses. They know what they're doing, and they're just going to play it safe, stretch out the lead, get one good opening fight, and win. That was really good, you know, really good rotations. Vlad is still top. So they're all gonna rotate up there. He knows he's in danger. But they don't know how soon he's gonna be picked. They're picking out see he's backing off right now. Griffin blue side taking advantage of them running up there and pushing out by. They're trying to squeeze out as much goal as they can. Right now with their position, they're not able to capitalize on a team fight that they win. That's what Red Team is really doing really good about picking their fights. Yes, they're losing it, but it's better to lose a team fight instead of losing an inhibitor at the process, killing them. So Red Side. And meanwhile, while they're pushing the bot side, they're going to go ahead and take the Baron. Kha'Zix is, 
you know, gonna take a peek because they're all missing. They don't know why. Tristan is pushing the bottom side. He has taken a turret. Kha'Zix is kind of showing up with Kha'Zix on it. They don't have any people. Voice Spikes coming out. Oh, DFG letting out. Oh, he's in a bad position. He's gonna be caught out. Randu is popping out. He's holding away. Vault Breaker is gonna come close. He's gonna use the denting blows. Oh, he's gonna pick it up with his Q. No, yes, he will. <laughs> Tristan will push as much as he can. Teleporting Lulu coming down. He's gonna back it off. And instead of staying to take the to take the Baron. They're gonna go ahead and clear it out, take their losses, take what they can, and head back. Turtle out as much as they can. They do have a strong team. They have a strong defensive team, but it's not enough for them to use an offensive against the blue side. Now, um, Stud Muffin's doing a really good job. I'm sorry for not saying the names. Uh oh, really close. Oh, he did not cast it fast enough. She is able to get away free. Very lucky. Very, very. <sighs> I'm sorry. This is a very fast game, guys, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very in intoxicating game. I'm having a very good time casting this. Thank you all for being here, and we'll just continue going. All right. Um, what I was going to say is during that, uh, during all of these team fights mainly, um, Ari is going for Anivia a lot. She's going, for, uh, she's going for either Anivia or Kha'Zix. Like, two of honestly, like, the lowest threats on there. Tristana is not even being touched. Like, she's just, she's just sitting in the back firing away without a care in the world. So right now, like, like, um, I do see that, like, I was, we pointed out earlier, there's a lot of oracles, elixirs being built, so they're trying to get that defensive work with it. But right now, uh, blue team's gonna try to take this Baron. It's going down fast. It's already at halfway health. Just not just sitting there firing away. Red team's kind of catching wind of this, but they gotta get in there now, or else it's gonna be steal. Oh, Vi, uh, oh, Vi trying to go in for the steal, but uh, trying to initiate on Cosmic right now. Ari's on the background trying to snipe somebody. is still in the back. And right now, oh, oh god, I'm losing. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, right now, Thresh getting locked up, and uh, yeah, that's just clean up. Vi using her ultimate to try to shut down Vlad, but it's not gonna work. Ooh, really needs to back off right now. Oh, that's a simple Q right there for Vladimir. Vlad seriously turning this team fight right now. And Vlad with a triple kill, with a flash dodging the W, and then finding that Q on Lucian for the Quadra. Will he find the Penta? I don't think he will, but he's got the chance. And Nivia is right here. Vla Ari just absolutely blowing everything on Anivia and getting there and making that a four for four. But wow, with the Baron on, uh, with the Baron, it's definitely going over to, uh, going over to blue side right there. Um, right there, um, I wanted to point out that Ari, that Ari did a good job right there. She got her um, DFG off on Tristana and kind of distracted them a little bit. So that's why they were able to put out so much damage and put their focus elsewhere. But but they were still not able to get that kill though. Ari wasn't able to hunt her over. So here you go. Well, another thing, this is a team fight that Stub Muffins were looking for. They saw their opportunity and they took it. Yes, the Vault Breaker fell, fell over the wall. Yes, the Flash had to be burned and the Smite. And yes, they still got the Baron. But remember, this is late game. Late game, how much gold you have does not matter. It does not matter. It's your choices and how you do it. Now, granted, Vlad is one of the strongest teams right now. And he has his Baron buff, which will make him a monster. But he has... What? Four seconds of vulnerability, five seconds of vulnerability with the pool and the Zonius? He's gonna be a tough nut to crack. Ari's gonna go ahead and pick up another blue buff and going down. Randu is on the Vi. DFG, Zonias, and Deathcap is gonna be coming out on the Ari. That's a, that's a lot of massive damage coming out. And 40% increased magic damage onto him, plus the true damage. Top turret will finally fall, giving them another thousand gold to catch up a little bit. The wards are everywhere on the red side. They have the vision control. They have what they need. They can make their moves in the mid lane safely. They're all grouped together. Vlad does not have his teleport up, so he has to regroup. But see, Lulu doesn't either, but hers is almost up, so she can utilize hers a little bit. Now, with her, um, uh, I forget the name of her ultimate, but I'm just going to say he will get wild growth. Her wild growth has, you know, it is very useful when she teleports in, and with the red team, they split out the blue team. They, they did what the blue team has been doing to them. They split them up. They reversed the tactic. Tristana was forced away. Kha'Zix got caught in a 1v3. Rom couldn't do much because he can't defend against both of once. Vladimir is going to get caught with a death sentence, but they're not going to go ahead and group on it because the blue side is too close to fight. Now, with their wave clear and the one person Baron, they're going to utilize it. Big minion wave pushing on both top and bot. So they're utilizing this chance to siege the mid lane. They will have to split up to defend against the other two, and with when they do split up to defend, they're going to push as much as they can, utilizing the wave clear, utilizing their range and their poke. All ultimates are up, almost all summoners are up. This is going to be one bloody fight, ladies and gentlemen.
I was gonna say red side has been doing a wonderful job keeping war control right now because not like not like maybe like before they got pushed back before red side got pushed back into their base their entire jungle was lit up by everybody they've been buying wards all game they've been trying to keep that vision going and honestly uh blue side isn't really trying to keep on it but of course they're 10,000 they're almost they're almost 14 and uh, 14 uh 1400 gold away so they don't they can kind of like kind of give it up a little bit but uh right now red side is doing a wonderful job trying to keep that ward control and uh trying definitely definitely turtling this game with the amount of wave clear they have with ari and lucian and lulu as well as Descent's coming out of the Kha'Zix, he's gonna get hit, he's gonna get down really low, flashes out. Brom Wall is gonna be up, he's gonna be transformed by, oh, Vlad will get fresh. And they're gonna go, Tristana, reset after reset, she's under, she's in deep territory. Wild Growth will knock her up and won't be able to kill. Brom's taking the turret, Tristana, er, <laughs> Lucian's gonna just use the drive-by once again. Anivia falling really low, triple kill for Brom, for him, he's gonna go, he's going for the Anivia, she's dropped to Nick. He's gonna run away from the Vlad, he's ditching out lots of damage right now, he's just gonna back off, turn to Lulu. Is gonna push her away. And Nivea is back. She is out of mana, so she will not be useful with the push. That is a really good play. Lucian in the back, almost, you know, he was in a dangerous position, but he was able to get out, use his ultimate, the culling, to take out a lot of people and the turret. Braum tanking just a little bit too long, so he was able to fall. Now, this, they're putting catch up with the gold. Vlad's gonna try to push in here as much as possible. But Lulu with the home guard will be able to come up and the whimsy. She's gonna poke him away with the good dance. He's gonna try as hard as he can. This, with this turret falling, Oh, well, no, he's going to back off. But with this turret falling, if they did get, manage to get the fall, it would have put them in a huge advantage. They would have had their main attack damage source in the mid side and pushing on the other side. That's what I would, I would have seen. It. Now, using their Oracle's uh, lenses, they're going to walk around, deward what they can, gain control of what's more. Vlad is going to take whatever gold he can and back off. Now, what I am surprised, Blue Side also, as you mentioned, does not have a lot of wards. They only have the trinkets and Braum Sidestone. Um, I would not be surprised to see Vlad or even Kha'Zix getting another side stone to help out. I mean, yeah, it's not much, but it'd be, you know, hey, vision is vision. You can't lie with that. Now, Kha'Zix is going to go ahead and Void Spike, leap over the wall, take, start beating down this dragon. Now, and Baron will be up in almost a minute. When they get the dragon, whatever gold that they get, Red Team does not get. So even though it is late game and, you know, gold doesn't really matter so much, but it still helps. Reflushing on the new elixirs, the fortitudes, and the and the others. Now, what I'm what I'm expecting them to see is either have a huge push mid. Blue side's gonna have a huge push mid. Try to keep on their toes, and they're gonna fall back through the red jungle, warding what they can and bait out a baron. But it's also gonna get, it's, it's gonna get spotted out by all those wards though. Like literally, like like you look right there on that path of baron. It's completely lit up by red side ward right now. Already trying to go for that pick, but uh, Kazakh's getting that. Uh, the jump just in time, barely dodging that uh, charm right there. Um, I was also gonna say is um, right now there is a there's a um, huge item discrepancy. So yeah, it is gold that they are choking out of um, red side, but red side is also kind of kind of trying to keep a cons is it's been a it's been a very slow incline to what it is now. But that's mainly because red side has also been getting what they can, and they're in their jungle also, and um, in the waves as well that uh, blue side keeps pushing towards them. Look at the red side. Not one single ward trinket. Now fights are coming down on the inside. Ari with her Foxfire down, she will not be as much used to the team fight. Now she can sit in the back and dish out as much damage as she can from the back line. But her main goal right now is to try to pick off a Kha'Zix or a Tristana. Now Anivia, yes, is good, but she's very immobile. Vi can take her down easily. Now right now, I do not see Vlad here. I do not know where he is at on the map. Oh, he's first in bot lane. He's pushing around with Lulu. And they're just trying to do what he can. Lucian's going to come up light saying, trying to give her a little hand because Vlad does have a lot of wave clear. And Q's going to come down. Two stacks, three stacks, four stacks on her. She's going to fall to Tristana. Ultimate coming down. Other turret. Double kill. Tristana. He's going to leap over the wall. Resets. Coming down. Kha'Zix going to clean up and kill Lucian. Tristana is hungry. She wants more. She's going to get the triple kill on, <laughs> on, the, on the Lulu. They're going to take the inhibitor. And Braum is tanking up. They do also have the Indians take out the inhibitor turret. The, or not the inhibitor turret. The next turret. And it's going to fall. And this looks like it's going to be game for the, for the blue side. Good game. Very well played. Great game. Utilizing your team. Congratulations. And uh, look forward. You know. <laughs> Now, if you were to give an MVP for this specific game, what would you do? Just for this specific one? Like advice? Yeah, no, no, your MVP. Oh, um, okay. Well, uh, 
Definitely, my my MVP more along the lines. Uh, it's a it's a it's a two way tie between uh, Lucian and Brom. Lu uh, or excuse, uh, bleh, 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 excuse me, I mean Vladimir and Brom. Vladimir, it's it's kind of like a little solo queue thing, but um, Vlad's uh, takeover of top kind of spiraled everything, allowed him to start pushing everything, and kind of the cookie started crumbling the way it goes. But Brom hit some massive ultimates and allowed Vladimir to and his team to follow up so well because the, their their team, other than Kha'Zix and Tristana, has so much AOE. All of their magic damage is AOE. So they can so if, if Brom goes in and hits that ultimate, all of that magic damage is coming in. And I believe other than um, other than the Mikhails on Lulu, there and the and the. Um, Oh, with the, uh, the Aegis on uh, Thresh that was well, honestly just being built, there is no magic resist on that team. Vi's got a Ronduins, uh, so she's kind of safe from uh, she's kind of safe from Kha'Zix and uh, Tristana, but there is no stopping that AOE right there. So that's my that's my pick right there. Just with a quick side note, this is not the MVP for the entire tournament. That will be determined later in the tournament, probably towards the finals. This is just for this specific game, so this is not for the awarding of the MVP medal. Now, casting these cast bubble games have left me undoubtedly parched. I'm going to go ahead and take a break and get a drink. I'll be back here in a little bit. As well, that was nice shout and casting for you guys. Uh, hopefully see you again. Next up, we've got Team Yolo Mid against Stud Muffins. Team Yolo Mid against Stud Muffins. All right, like I said, next up is Stud Muffins and Team Yolo Mid.
guess. The only thing I hate about shotgun is what? You get really thirsty. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that happens to me. All right, guys. Next up, we have Stud Muffins against Team Yellow Mid.
So, quick super recap, Southern Edge of Water, 8 is the schedule, 5 is in-game, 9 is Champs Cup. Yeah, that's okay. right. Perfect. You got it. Alright, right, man. I'll be right back. Alright, no problem. Alrighty guys, everyone's just getting locked in and ready to go right now. We're just waiting on one more person, I believe, and we'll be go ahead and get this game rolling really quickly now, okay? Yeah, they're just fixing this up. Ah, uh, okay. Reinvite, uh... Oh, no, I'm not part of it. Am I in the stream? Alrighty guys, and we are going to pop into Champ Select right now, so let's go ahead and get this party started. Okay, so um, I believe Stud Muffins is on, uh, I, don't know, I actually do not know how to change that, so I'm not worried about that. But um, I believe Stud Muffins is now on a blue side, and, uh, and then a Team Yolo mid is on purple, if I'm correct. Right? Okay, alright, I don't know how to fix all that, so... I said I don't know how to fix all the uh, stuff up there with stud muffins and YOLO mid and all that. Alrighty, and uh, first ban for uh, blue side is Lissandra following up with the purple team from Vi. Uh, I don't know about the Lissandra bond. The Vi I kind of little see a little bit, but the Lissandra brand's a little weird. It's more of a Europe pick, a Syndra following up. Definitely a mid lane focus right here from a blue side. I don't know how to do it either, I'm just gonna leave it, honestly. Like, I don't play around. I was gonna say, if you know how to fix that, And uh, bands of uh, Thresh falling from purple side and uh, Tristana as well. I'm sorry, we're just uh, fixing stuff. Alright, and the last band is going to be Ari. A lot of champions in the. Uh, a lot of champions banned from purple side from last game. Uh, it's uh, rather interesting. All right, let's see what first pick is going to be. I am honestly, I don't know if the rise is here. Oh, that's a Maokai. Definitely going top lane with that. Very, very strong first pick. Um, Maokai can peel very extremely well for his team with uh, with his uh, rework on his ultimate. So I do really agree. 
don't know if they're going to lock it in just yet. But you guys know some power picks that are still open. Uh, I believe Rise is still open as well. Lee Sin too. I mean, they could be looking for anything right now. All right, and that is going to be that Maokai that is going to be locked in for Blue Side and the Stud Muffins. And let's see what Team Yolo Mid is going to pick with their two spots. That's going to be a Lucian first pick. Um, good, solid first pick. And Jarvan uh, most likely definitely go uh, definitely going into the jungle right there. It's a good, so good solid uh, first pick. So, um, Lucian, uh, he's got doesn't necessarily have like a lot of hard strengths, but he doesn't necessarily have a lot of hard weaknesses as well. So he's a good solid first pick for an ADC if you're ever looking for one. Uh, still sitting on the champs right now. We don't know if they're going to be locked in just yet. Huh? Yeah, they, uh, you can see that there's a lot of discussion going on right now on purple side. Alrighty, and three, two, and one. And it looks like they're going to be... Oh, the last switch to Rumble. <laughs> uh, Rumble. Good old Rumble. You can see the smile it brings my face. Rumble's my personal favorite and my main top. Yeah. Uh, if, super, if that's not a Super Galaxy Rumble, I'm going to have some problems. But, um, all right. So, Rumble picked up in the top lane. Uh, blind. Potentially looking at an Alistar pick for top to match up with that Rumble. Alistar is not as good as he used to be as of last patch. Um, when last patch, when this current patch, they fixed the bug. Oh, that switched into a Morgana, so I could be dead wrong, and I'm just going to stop that conversation there. Um, Morgana, really good support, really good first pick. Stops, um, I don't know why they're picking uh, Morgana, though, and then uh, the purple team's banned Thresh. So, I mean, it's a good pick, but uh, other than that, it can be easily... Oh, no switching to the Amumu jungle. Um, let's see here, still a uh, Hawk, Hawk Strike, still looking to lock in something. Switching to the Braum. So we're going to be seeing Braum once more on a blue team, but this time... Uh, this time, instead of sub muffins going up against it, they're going to be playing with them. And Braum can be matched up with a lot of ADCs. He's a really good, solid support with his passive and his Q, and his ultimate is just really amazingly done well, if aimed correctly. Now, let's see what Purple Team's going to answer with. Um, looking potentially for power picks, Mumu is really blue reliant, so. Uh, Purple team might want to build a level one team comp right now. That's my advice. Um, try to go for maybe a Lucian, like they're hovering over. Oh, they could be going for the Vayne. Um, that's a really heavy front line, so I could see the definite knowledge in that. Um, I was just uh, wondering what's going to be going on mid. That Vayne might potentially definitely be a lock right there. And the Janna. That's going to be a minorly scary lane. They don't have the best of synergy necessarily since Vayne. Vayne goes well with more engaged style uh, supports like Leona and Braum, but um, they're going to be definitely locking in the Janna for the disengage of that. Uh, probably most likely for uh, Braum ulti, follow up with either Maokai roots, uh, Mumu, uh, Mumu Qs into ults. So um, very good pick right now. It's very popular in the world if you guys are keeping track of uh, esports right now. Um, Stud Muffins flicking about on some champions right now. Um, Vigor maybe <laughs> uh, blitzcrank doubt it um they're just probably flicking about just she's probably trolling um but right now purple has um purple's a little mixed up right now because um they have to pick a uh rumble's got some very uh okay wave clear with his flame spitter um but right now purple is not looking at very any good wave clear right now so uh, potentially looking at a, uh, okay, no, no. Uh, that's a Lucian lock-in right now. So that's going to be a uh, Braum Lucian, a uh, very strong bot lane with uh, Lucian's passive. And uh, he'll be able to get those uh, those um, Qs, or the uh, Braum's passive off a lot faster than any other ADCs. And that's going to be the cat lock-in for um, mid lane right there. Now, uh, oh, um, Zig's a very good pick against uh, Katarina right now. Um, can uh, Ziggs can zone out with their bom with his bombs and pretty much stay almost necess unnecessarily untouched from Katarina unless like some Amumu comes in there and tries to get some action going. Um, that potentially might be a lock in. I don't know. Um, personally, I'm more of a fan of uh, Syndra because uh, Syn oh oh or Syndra's banned, but uh, 
Um, but more uh, just the opinion wise, I'm more a fan of Isindra when it comes to it. But uh, I'm potentially looking at the AP Malphite mid. Um, it's uh, kind of a weird, quirky thing in solo queue, but uh, never say it doesn't work. Oh, but they're going to be definitely locking in the Ziggs right there. So uh, this is your final team looking at uh, blue side with Maokai, Mumu, Braum, um, Lucian, and Katarina. Purple side, Jarvan, Rumble, uh, Janna, Vayne, and then um, Ziggs as well. Alrighty, and uh, welcoming back everybody, Mac. Alrighty. Alright, okay, so what's your first impressions on these team comps, man? Well, returning after a small break, I'm seeing a good uh, uh, a Mumu Maokai combo, which is really decent because, you know, Maokai can just go in and pop his ultimate and the Mumu follow up. With the Mumu follow up, the damage that would be dealt, you know, it'd be less than the help of the Maokai one, but it would keep him there. And Katarina can clean up along with it. There's a lot of magic damage, too, so I have to watch out for that. Now, J4. Is not a very good pick against the Mumu. Yes, it's early game, yes, if he gets a good steal, all that. But the big issue is if J4 ults and then a Mumu ults, they're all screwed. So Vayne is a very, is, um, you generally, generally strong pick against Lucian if she has a good lane partner. Now it's a Braum Lucian. So if Braum gets Q off, the, the passives are going to be terrible. I mean, it's just going to mech him up. Now, you made the comment about the Rumble, you know, has okay wave clears, an okay pick, and all that stuff, but there's one advantage. He doesn't need mana. All he has to do is worry about health. So he'll be fine. He'll be just perfectly fine. He won't have to worry about anything. And there was a rumble earlier in the tournament, actually, that just dominated. That just tore Maokai to shreds. Yeah, well, so, uh, it, very good pick yeah. Now, now, for the Katarina Ziggs pick, the combination there, the Ziggs is actually a safe pick against Katarina. The reason being, he's not going to engage. He doesn't need to engage. Two second bouncing bombs with the blue buff. 40% cooldown reduction. Hey, I'm just going to check in the back and just blah, 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 blah. So there's no reason for him to be in the fight whatsoever. Now, if he does wind up pushing, because Katarina's like, nah, I don't want to get hit by bombs. I just want to chill. Ma um, Amumu is able to come up from behind. So that's a charge can only get you so far. So it's both teams have very strong. Janna can also keep away the Mal or not the Maokai itself, but the Amumu. And, and the Katarina, hey, we're going to go in, and I'm going to bully you guys away. No pun intended, but... <laughs> I'm feeling kind of freaky. Anyways, coming to now, uh, we're just waiting for the delay to pass by. The main, um, the main thing is, the, the biggest concern that I want to see is a lot of people see Vayne. I don't see a lot of protection towards Vayne. So Vayne is probably going to wind up being a sitting duck for a while. I don't mean to take that, you know, sing that offensively or anything, but if you had like a Lulu support or a Oriana mid, I would see it working, Verder. But there's no, she has no protection. I mean, Maokai and Amumu and Lucian and Katarina can all go right over the J4 wall, even Braum. So there's literally, it all depends on placement. And I believe among the new patch, I'm not sure if it works with J4 wall. I know it does with the Anivian others. The Vein Condemn does stun them, but yeah, I don't. It, it does. It does now. Okay. Yeah, it does all right. The main, uh, um, recently in the uh, most recent patch, they updated. Um, they updated a lot of uh, stuns like Vayne's Condemn. Um, uh, I'm speaking in the mic there for a second, but Vayne's uh, Condemn now uh, interacts better with a player-made environment like J4's ult, uh, Nivea's wall. Um, that was in there along with, I believe it was uh, it was Vayne who got those buffs along with um, Poppy, and there was one more. Uh, I don't know if you could think of it off the top of your head. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Nar, Nar. Nar, yes. Yeah, Nar's, ult Nar's ultimate, yes. And also, uh, they fixed it as well so that it would work with Azir's wall, but of course there's not an Azir in this game. I don't think there's going to be Azir in this game ever. All right, so counting down on the last little seconds, we're about to jump into this game right now. Okay. All righty, and oh, go ahead. Uh, don't, don't switch yet. Uh, as now we're coming up to the loading screen, um, I believe uh, somebody here has to make an announcement real fast. If you are entered in the Super Smash Brothers Brawl Tournament, we will be starting soon. Please make your way to the setups in the back. We will be calling your matches really soon.
set up these. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Okay, starting into this game. <clears throat> Once again, no more sweepers, so I am not expecting an early invade. Now, we may see a couple here and there. They do have the driving swag flag with the Fanatic skin. It actually looks pretty good in the game. I was worried about that. And um, they're going to go through it. Svelte is on Janna, so she's going to be a little pokey early. Katarina with the boots for start. Early we saw Katarina with the... Uh, Ruby Crystal, two pots, but it's the Boots 4, so she's going to be trying to dodge Ziggs bombs more a little bit. Ziggs is going 21-0-9 with the Biscuit Masteries, so he will be focusing more on the sustain game. Maokai and Katarina are going to go ahead and push towards into the red jungle. Knowing, you know, they don't know they've been entirely spotted yet, to my knowledge. And Rumble's going to do a face check, and it's going to be early fight. He's going to use Flamethrower and try to run away. Sapling's going to slow him and put off a little damage. And he's like, okay, we've been spotted. I don't think we should stay here anymore, but they're going to do it anyways. Rumble's gonna think about coming on the other side. Jarvan and Ziggs are rotating upwards. Katarina and Maokai may get caught for a level one fight. But really fast, they decided not to fight it because they don't know where the other team is at. And they're just gonna back off and say, okay, we're not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna go take Blue. We're gonna be safe. Early items, Doran Shield on Rumble. You know, health, reg uh, health regen, he doesn't really have to worry about it. And the auto attacks from Maokai. Maokai does have a really high starting attack damage. So he, may he doesn't have to cast spells. But, you know, Rumble will do it for him in order to get the equalizer. Yeah, he's going to spam as much as he can. So, Vayne with the Doran Blade, normal. Lucian Doran Blade. Everything's going to be, you know, retrospective builds. Um, everything's already been set up how it's supposed to be. So, we're good. Amumu, interesting start. Starting red. Does not want to get it stolen. So, he will be able... He will not go for the invade early because, you know, Amumu has a really weak early game. Um, now, we have Tengen, Topa, Gurren, Lagan, Rumble up here. <laughs> My favorite skin. And he's gonna, you know, just do as much as he can. He's, his main goal right now is to survive and not be bullied by Maokai. That's his main goal. Now, the biggest thing that I'm worried about seeing right now is a the Braum Lucian bot lane. That's what I'm afraid of. Okay, this is gonna be hellacious against Vayne. Um, yes. I was also gonna say uh, Maokai is definitely looking to. Um Maokai's definitely going to sustain this lane, although he's taking a lot of poke right now. The Maokai's just going to simply walk it off. Um, as I was saying, uh, Maokai started with the um, with just the classic uh, crystalline fast to three. Yo, we kind of fixed that. Oh yeah, we'll fix that. But um, Maokai's pushing in. Uh, Rumble's pushing in top lane. Um, got a uh, Lucian Braum bot lane. That we just Bought up is uh, pushing in bot. Um, Junglers just finished clearing their second camps. Oh, so close to stunning that Vayne right there, but I don't think there have been much you could have done outside of that turret. Uh, let's see here. Not much action going on. It's just going to be the farm game for a bit here, especially in that top lane. I mean, Rumble does have skill potential there, but it's going to be all dependent on how Malphite plays. J4 coming around the mid lane on the Katarina. Looks like, oh, she's going to Shumpo out, and he's just going to use the W to reduce the damage as much as he can. So. Knowing that the Strumpo is down, he's just going to chill there for a little bit. And he's like, no, it's not risky. They're a little bit pushed. She has leeway. Rumble is bullying Maokai. That's his goal. Use his level up advantage to keep Maokai center now. Before we just stay alive. He knows that Moomoo's up there. J4 is going to come up with a counter gank. And he's going, oh, the flash will be burned over the wall. He's not going to risk getting himself in a bad position by using the select by Q combo. Katarina poking away and taking some damage from the bouncing bombs, which they will be lethal. Early game, they're not so much of a bad threat. Unless if you have high max 10. Janna's just trying to use the spell these. She, uh, um, Katarina's doing really low. The EQ combo did not go off, but she's still doing really low. She is burning her pots. She's out of pots now. So right now, uh, uh, Ziggs is a bit of a head with his mana regen, but he doesn't have any pots either. But he has gone with a 21-0-9 mastery, so he will be able to sustain more off. Braum is just trying to keep Vayne zone. Right now, that's their goal. They're trying to, bot's trying to keep zone. Action is coming back and forth. It's mostly poking. Ziggs is utilizing his range against her, but she's going to go ahead and tag out and say, Hey, yo, Amumu, take over for me. I got to back off for a bit. I got to heal. I got to take care of stuff. 
And surprisingly, everywhere, the CS is really even. It's completely even no matter where you are. Except, well, except a little bit in the jungle discrepancies because J4 has been trying to become a more active jungler, utilizing his early ganks compared to a Mumu. And Vice is coming out. Double tap's gonna do it, but it's not gonna do much because Gianna is doing really good at blocking the damage with it. So J4 is standing on top. It's coming. EQ combo will hit it and come back up. And they're gonna slow and do as much damage as he can. Red buff flash will be burned from Maokai. He's gonna keep hitting. Alice gonna flash both flash. The first blood go down to J4. It'll be really good. Maokai is not gonna be dropped down below because now he's gonna miss out on a bit of XP from the next wave coming up because Rumble is gonna do what he can to push it. Tempest is coming out. Light is gonna be hitting on the Janna. Really good use of the red buff and the canvas because with that early play, they're able to use what they can. Rumble can back off and buy what he needs now. Maokai is gonna get for a flask and some pots. I was also gonna say is um, Red Side took clear advantage of that opportunity because when Ziggs uh, was chunking bombs at Katarina earlier, Amumu was sitting there in lane just uh, making sure the wave isn't pushed on his tower. So they know where Amumu is. He's in mid lane. So that's, that opens up a very clear gank for um, for Red Side and a very safe gank because they know they know Amumu's not going to come for the potential counter gank. So it's an easy 2v1 and for a very easy kill. Oh, Ziggs going kind of low here. To the Katarina, what's the Katarina? She's got an early Megatron probe, which um, works really well. Um, she's going to be definitely blocking a lot more of that Ziggs damage and uh, definitely trying to lure it back. But Ziggs is going to be going back as he's out of mana. Well, what Ziggs did is, he, I don't know if you noticed it, but when he leveled up, I do this take a lot. When you ult, ult the wave, wave clear, buy you time to go back and come back. J4 went ahead and decided to cover from anyways. So I have Katarina decided to push. Now, Moomoo is going to utilize this and make his rotations around the jungle and try to move around. Now, for strategically, if you think about it, Rumble was pushed up top, right? And Zay started pushing up too. So Mumu had a couple from Katarina who got low. Giving J4 the time to stay up top. And Maokai didn't see it coming. He had no chance to ward it. So there's a lot of discrepancies that you don't really notice here in the beginning. But later on, Katarina's coming down. Bye, she's gonna do a pose. Life Slinger, Terry Dive. Bob's gonna block out. Oh, she's gonna jump over Flash. Ignite's coming down. Ignite! Rumble's coming down, Helen goes more like Katarina will fall in vain. Vayne could dive into the wall with a Braum ultimate. She's gonna get a double kill. A really good placement. Zeke's coming down. Braum is still cut off. South Charge. Mindful is gonna come down. I'm expecting South Charge is gonna knock him away. Yeah, here he goes, knocking him back. Mooma's gonna come up. Braum still has his leave. He's gonna use it. Rumble with his ultimate down. I'm sorry, I thought it was a Braum ultimate earlier, but it was a Rumble one because they look alike. Um, except I thought Braum had the Dragon Slayer because they look almost exactly alike with the skins. And Mooma with his red up and spawn, but he's gonna come check the blue. See if J4 is there. Been there yet. Bane and Janna are gonna go ahead and push it out. Try to make Lucian or Braum, anybody, lose XP so they can be ahead. Come back by safe linked items. Ziggs did the safe choice, went ahead and rushed the Chalice, but Katarina got a Negatron Cloak. She doesn't like the poke, she doesn't want to touch it. Mumu is gonna go ahead and try to get his, um, he's gonna go ahead and try to get the, uh, what do you call it, the, the Spirit Stone as fast as he can. It helps with the sustain among his, uh, his tiers. J4 is gonna go ahead and give Ziggs the first bloom. What I was talking about earlier, two second bombs. No matter what. Statistically proven, you cannot beat a Ziggs with a blue buff. Two second bombs, massive range, you can't beat it. I was going to say, uh, going back to that team fight, um, if um, definitely Jana played a huge part there, because if you didn't notice that um, that uh, cattle, that cattle, oh, it stopped instantaneously. Jana didn't even need to ult. She already had a Howling Gale ready to go, ready to plan, pulled it. Um, it definitely, I'm probably bet you Vayne would have potentially gone down right there. Oh, got a little skirmish here going on right now. Nothing special though, they're just sitting there training damage. Uh, but as I was, oh, and potentially Rumble just sitting there. Um, as I was saying earlier, um, Vayne was dangerously close, subpar 200 HP. If Cat had been, oh. uh, just trading wards, um, if Cat had gotten that, gotten able to get that ult off, Vayne would have gone down. That would have been... Uh, that would have been no damage for Vayne and no double kill for Vayne. Rumble was still running teleport, but um, Vayne uh, Rumble with an excellent teleport, by the way, and uh, an even more beautiful ult, and then Vayne with the ex with the condemn right on the corner. So they followed that team fight up phenomenally. That was wonderfully set up, especially for the situation they were in. Regardless, one fact you forgot to mention: Vayne still has a flash. She could have flashed away safely, but she had faith in her support. Remember, in the words of Civ HD, I am support. I will be there for you, death or alive. That, and that's what, that's the hardest part about a bot lane. And I, I've been saying it all day. And I mean, it's it's very difficult to have trust. Katarina is trying to dominate the fact that she doesn't need mana. J4 is showing up in the bot lane. He wants to use his, uh, is he 60? Yeah, he wants to use his ultimate. But 
He decided, no, I'm going to back off. Cat, uh, Lucian's going to go ahead and give away his free poke as much as he can. He wants to hit them. He wants to try to get any advantage as much as he wants. Ziggs, utilizing his blue. Poking and poking and farming. 60 gold per Q. Now, there's 2k gold ahead. They do have, you know, they're winning by a big margin. They're utilizing what they got. Vayne, they haven't been able to poke down the vein. They haven't been able to slow it. Yes, Lucian is ahead, but Lucian has an easier time farming as do almost every AD carry than Vayne. Granted, Vayne, uh, granted, Lucian has a very small, just a little bit attack, maybe a little bit less than Vayne. I don't know if it's exactly the same attack range, but Lucian has a stronger early game, and he's utilizing that as much as he can. But eventually, Vayne will outscale him, especially with the double kill build into a cutlass. Katarina with a nice Shunpo dodge, dodge bouncing ball, uh, bouncing bomb. That was really nice. Now, if you notice, Blue Side has the word "river" all over the place. But J4, I don't want to gank from, you know, I don't want to gank from the river. I want to gank from the lane. That's where he utilizes because you don't, you won't see it coming. Now, tons of things coming up top. If J4 is trying to gank, he is going to spot it and he realizes it, so he's going to back off. He's going to walk into a movement jungle and try to take what he can, but he may be faced with the movement Katarina rotating. Now, Ziggs once again. If, Ka if J4 does go ahead and go to counter gank and gets caught out, Ziggs can still meet up with an ultimate. The big one is an amazing, you know, it does a lot of damage, two or three hundred damage early game. And here goes the skirmish coming out, movement stun coming out, he's going to leave out. He's 3v1, and a Maokai flash, he's going to flash to make sure he can't snare. Good satchel charge to stop them from being able to follow up on anything, just in case they had any tricks up their sleeve. It was a little bit risky, but it was two flashes for one, and it was a very, you know, it was a well judged bait. So right now, Maokai doesn't have a flash, so he's free to gain. Katarina doesn't have a flash right now. So they're still good, but Katarina does still have a Shun Po. And Rumble's going to go ahead and, you know, after pushing up the top at 70 CS, he's going to back off for a little bit, take a breather. Oh, no, he changed his mind. He, he thought Maokai had left, but he's coming back. J4 is going to rotate back. Bot. Oh, the pass is coming out. Good condemn, stopping the, any more damage being brought out from... From after the Braum pass. So if Umumu is going ahead and be at the blue buff, he's like, hey, I want to steal it. But it's very dangerous right now. They're tiptoeing around each other. J4 is going to back up. He's going to buy. Umumu is just trying to get make any play happen. He's tired of the farm game. They want kills. They need to get back up. And it's mostly right now, folks. Use, utilize what you can. Valkai is going to go in. Right, he's doing much damage. Knock up. He's almost out of mana, though. And the equalizer make almost bringing Rumble to a silence, but he knows what he's doing. It's very hard to master Rumble. It may not seem like it, but he's a very difficult technique champion to master. And this is right now a really good game. All ultimates are up. Tons of wards coming out from the red side and the blue side. They're prepared what they can. J4 is unable to make a play right now. He has no vision. He hasn't been able to find many wards with the sweepers, and which are now coming out more. But he just he's trying to do something out of it, but he can't. And that's a really good that's a really good call from blue side because now they're behind. They don't need to worry about anything more. I was going to also say, um, I believe uh, Mumu was up there trying to look for that steal. And they're like, like, see, the Mumu is there right now. He's looking for that steal because um, I believe that they know that. Um, because when they originally caught out J4 back there in the two for one flash trade, that um, J4 came in and just dropped the ward on the blue buff. So they know the blue buff warded. So they're trying to fight for the blue buff, kind of get that counter steal. But Mumu's blue buff still hasn't respawned yet. I don't believe it. I believe he's got another minute or two on the respawn. So they're trying to fight over this blue buff right now to keep Ziggs from getting that blue buff. And oh, with his Z Mumu landing a Q, uh, but Ziggs is going to disengage right there. Uh, Rumble landing some very nice poke on the Maokai. That guy's just going to Q and say no as well. But back to what I was saying earlier, they don't want blue buff on Ziggs right now. Oh, wait. Oh, Maokai going in for a snare and a passive proc. So as I was saying, they do not want blue buff on Ziggs right now. They don't want blue buff on Ziggs because giving blue buff Ziggs on Ziggs means he's going to sit there and free farm and keep free farming and that's not going to be a kill lane. What they want right now, what blue team wants is kills. They want to get back into this game. Gold um, far uh, farm is leaning a little bit more now towards uh, blue side. But also that gold disparity pretty much right now is those kills. So they want to get back into this game. They're winning on CS now, and now they want to start winning on kills as well. Well, also, uh, I want to try something real fast. Just have real fast. And no, it just takes it away. I thought it would bring up the jungle timers, because if you can see it in game, I can't just see it in spectator mode. But that's a good call, though. They didn't see him ward the blue buff, and he didn't know where Amumu started. Because most people assume, hey, Amumu's mana hungry. He's going to start blue. I mean, who wouldn't do it? But 
and he had a good leash bot lane where he didn't have to worry about it. Now, once again, there, he's still trying to make plays. He's more gank oriented. He has 41 farm to Muma's 48. With Muma has a quill quote, quill cloak. So he doesn't want to farm right. He doesn't want to gank right now because he knows J4 can't. So with that J4 not being able to gank, he's gonna go ahead and steal around. Look, he's already at the red buff. He's stealing it because J4 hasn't gotten to it yet. J4 has been trying to gank. Nice block on the Howling Gale with the shield. Just keep going. Oh, Vayne Ultimate coming down. Knock up Lucian. And a great disengage with the Brahm Ultimate. They're going to back off. And uh, I don't think the culling was worth it, but it does bring Vayne to half health. So it was a really good disengage by Brahm to keep J4 from ulting and keeping on the pressure. Now, Valkai, now with getting uh, his Catalyst, he's able to trade more with Rumble. Because Valkai has a really late scaling. But now Rumble is trying to keep him down as much as he can, but he does just way too much damage. And Muma's not going to give away any debuff. He doesn't need it, which is actually a good pick with the Katarina, because now Muma doesn't have to worry about it. They don't have to worry about trading off debuffs. So they're perfectly fine. They, what they did with the blue side is they went more on takes and sustain, while the red side just um, had a good outplay with the Janna Tornado from earlier. So what blue side is they're counting their losses, they're using their scaling, the better off, the better themselves keep going. Uh, Rumble, Rumble playing around with fire and not as Q. Um, yes, my puns are on freak level. But, um, alrighty, Braum hitting a Q on Vayne, but it doesn't look like they're going to follow up right now. Um, Lucian probably going to back very soon. He's got two pieces of that Infinity Edge. Um, Vayne finished with her Bork. So right now, in technical lane advantage, Vayne has the upper hand right now because she has that Bork. She's gonna. She's turning into that uh, that duelist that Vayne excels so well at. And then once Vayne gets her Bork in that two v two lane, she can start going. But she doesn't really have an engaged support necessarily to follow it up. She has Jana, which is a disengage, which is good, gonna be good for the team fight later on. But for the laning phase right now, all Jana can really do is just shield her and uh, disengage uh, if Blue Side decides to pull and engage. Right now, Katarina roaming up to top um, lane. Trying to possibly gank that rumble, but J4 is back there up by the system. Alrighty, and then Donna just throwing up more howling kills. The camera is to focus on bot lane. Oh. Katarina is falling back down. J4 are backing as well, as we can see some of the buys. J4 is finished. Um, both junglers have finished their uh, spirit I uh, their spirit item. Uh, Mumu is sliding with the blue uh, with the uh, golem, and J4 going for more damage oriented path. Right now, there is a lot of... I like seeing this on both sides. There's a lot of wards. This game is so heavily focused on work control. Okay, I didn't know if you saw this, but red side bot turret is extremely low. Red side top turret is extremely low. Brumble teleport down. Makai still has his. What they're, what I'm expecting uh, Amumu or Katarina to do. Katarina rotate up top, or will have all four-man gank bots. Take the turret, rotate dragon. But Brave Team has already beaten to it, knowing what they're seeing they're going to do. So they're going to go ahead and take it. They'll be going down way too fast for them to be able to... To be able to contest. Katarina. So it was a really good call for the red team to go ahead and save the losses because they're going to lose the low turrets no matter what. They're going to lose it too dangerously low. So Maokai is going to keep putting on the pressure to take up the top turret while bot team is going to take up bot. This is going to trade off. Red team is ahead. Catch out on the Katarina. Will she, will she get rich and jump? Oh, she flashes over the wall. I thought it was a blue ward. So the flash is burned. Her trinket, uh, she didn't want to take the time to trinket you over the wall because it, well, it's also on cooldown. But she didn't want to waste the pink wards. The pink wards are very valuable in this game now since they put them to where you can see them at all times. And not to gonna lie, I was extremely disappointed with that move, but it, it, it happens. It makes you think more, makes you want to fight more. Now, there's not a whole lot of plays going on. They're trying, Red Team's trying to make something happen to keep their lead going and to keep it up. But it appears this is a high farming game already. 18 minutes in, 200 farm Katarina, almost. 150 farm on Ziggs. They have a really strong farm lane, and right now I fear that Katarina and Ziggs right now are going to play the most part in the fight. Red Team will go ahead and lose their bot turret now, and they're going to rotate and try to gain some more map control throughout the whole, you know, the whole blue side or the blue side of the red team, and try to utilize that more to make more plays to go ahead and do a hook all the way around mid lane and catch them off under the turret. I was gonna say, uh, going back to uh, how how valuable pink uh, pink wards are. That pink ward that is over on a uh, blue side's uh, right entrance, um, leading uh, leading up to uh, like mid lane and to wolves and everything. That ward has been there for at least last I think. Right now we got a little fight on our hands. Maokai ulting. 
Uh, it's just going to be an even trade, though. Maokai with those passive procs coming out on top. And uh, Rumble dropping an ult to clear the wave. I believe he has plans to back, and he doesn't want to. Uh, they definitely don't want to lose this top tower right now. They want to stall that lane for as much as possible. Because I believe right now the CS game's a little even in that department. But right now, they're not ready. For, they they want to be looking for fights, but they want to be looking for picks, not full-on team fights. Because right now... Uh, Blue side's hitting their mid-game power spike. Lucian's got his Infinity Edge done. Uh, let's see here. Maokai's probably got enough gold for his Rod of Ages in the back pocket. Katarina finished her DFG. Right now, they're extremely strong over uh, over blue, over purple side's itemization right now. So they they want to try to stall that top lane for as long as possible. And that's why Rumble Blue is ultimate right there. But as I was saying, that pink ward has been there for at least 15 minutes. I've been keeping my eye on it. And it has served so much usage. But right now, it looks like they're about to lose mid turret though. Uh, Ziggs taking advantage of Ziggs backing there. Now, um... Katarina has purely gained that farm advantage, right? It was about a 10 CS lead towards Katarina. But just because Ziggs did not have that blue buff. Oh, and there goes the top tower as well from uh, blue so uh, from red side. But as I was saying, literally that CS gap has gotten so big is because Katarina is able to get in there and she's able to get her farm without a good ward clear by uh, J4 right there. Uh, um, red side starting to finally get down the pink set as I've seen been sitting there in the for a while. As I was saying, um, so trying to say Ziggs doesn't have blue anymore. So you can't sit there and spam all day with two-second bouncing bombs as we've been focusing on. Um, so Katarina's able to get in there, get her farm, get out, and not take much harass for it. Now, uh, team's rotating right now. Uh, I believe uh, Blue Side does not have a Dragon Timer. So they do not know when... Uh, their uh, dragon's going to be coming up. J4 is going to be taking his red. Oh, Katarina going very low, but uh, she's not going to get caught in the center of that, so she's going to walk away. Ziggs with a very decent ult, though, and uh, Mumu is ready for, their, for, for her backup just in case Ziggs decided to go deep. But uh, Ziggs decided to play it safe and walk away. Both uh, junglers clearing their blue buffs as well. Um, let's see here. Um, definite, uh, very, very strong ward. Uh, We've been talking about wards a lot in this game because both sides have been buying a lot of them. And it's really good uh, for picks, especially uh, leaning towards more uh, blue side. Oh, blue side got teleport coming in. They're going to try to catch out, but it doesn't look like it's going to work. They're just going to walk it off. They saw the teleport coming from a mile away. Rumble is going to take this opportunity now since uh, Maokai is bot lane, and they're looking for... Uh, all of blue right now is down in uh, over by Dragon Area. Rumble is going to be pushing in that turret right now. So I believe uh, Maokai and Kat Katarina is going to be moving up there right now, but blue side, our pur um, purple team is all moved up right now. This turret is most likely definitely going down. If not, it's going to be stretched down to a very light shred of HP. Katarina got to come in just in time to scare Rumble off. But right now, it's just farm game, farm game, farm game. Well, one thing you haven't mentioned before is, despite the fact that the red team got the three kills, got the first blood and the double kill bot lane, they just lost three turrets. They just lost 3,000 gold. It is now dead even despite the dragon. Now, what the dragon's spawning in a minute, blue side knows that red took dragon. So now that they have it warded, they're gonna know when it's gonna spawn. Blue side already has, or red side has the, the timer on it, so they're gonna know when it's gonna spawn. But they're not gonna know when blue is gonna go ahead and try to take it. That's right now is gonna be, I predict, the next fight. Now, with the current team fight, now this is likely gonna play out one of two ways. Maokai is going to successfully lock down Bane along with um, Amumu. Or Janna is going to be able to war keep them off just long enough for Ziggs, Bane, and uh, Rumble to be able to dish out just enough damage along with J4 to just keep her alive and to keep you know tanking as much as they can to get the dragon and to get the team fight. Remember, this is dead even game. I mean, this can go either way. Despite kills, it's mostly the farm and the turrets. Blue side is utilized that their late game scaling. They're able to push away more turrets. See, J4 hasn't built tanky yet. He has a little bit of MR, he has level one boots, and he has damage. Maokai, tons of HP. Amumu, tons of HP. Braum, tons of HP. They have to be able to tank it. Blue side, if Katarina is able to melt somebody with the DFG, they're done. Reset after reset after reset. Hop after hop after hop. And they're just going to go down. They're going to drop like flies. I was going to say, if I was Rumble right now, I would be topside pushing that wave hard because you know they're going to be fighting over this dragon right now. Blue side is going to be definitely trying to get in this dragon. Rumble has teleport. Maokai does not. Maokai's there, of course, because he wants to be there so he's not leaving his team behind. 
but Rumble has the perfect, almost the near perfect opportunity to split push right now, and they are not taking advantage of it. And but there's gonna oh, oh, fight breaking out right here. Braun with a very well placed shield is gonna block. I believe it was the Vayne Kadem and Vayne flashing. All right, Flame was flashes burned. They don't want to take any chances. Now earlier when you were talking about um, Rumble going out there, right now Dragon is live. It is the main concern. Blue side is gonna start it with the Vayne flash down. It's gonna be a little bit harder for her to escape, stay alive, because you know Jan doesn't have Mikhail's yet. And I don't know if she's gonna build it. But what Rumble was planning on doing, and that's that they got another blue dragon. Blue side got another dragon. Congratulations to them. Uncontested. Rumble has no choice but to go ahead and head up top to go ahead and trade it off. Katarina's getting J4, but did not be able to do a whole lot of damage. She really wants to get a good engage to utilize their ultimates. Right now, you see the wards everywhere. Information, they're able to move around and not get caught. But if they don't make an act soon, they're going to be in deep trouble. Maokai getting hit by Rumble's slow, along with the Rylai, is passive. Now, so what they're going to do, Red Team is pushing down bot lane. They're utilizing that blue, that blue side is in the jungle. They're going to go ahead and do a pincer attack and try to catch off Katarina. And that way, Blue has to either leave the turret and Katarina or, or essentially force a fight here that they, quite frankly, may not win. Katarina definitely knows this. They needed to get out of there now, but she's got the support of her team now. Everybody down in this spot lane right now. They're itching for a fight. This is going to be looking useful in the trigger. Rumble's looking for it, but catches a catches a E to the face. Um, Diggs tries to go for the E to push him back because with the Rumble slow accidentally pushes them forward, but it's okay. It's a good disengage from uh, Purple Side. Just walking back, knowing that they need to get out of there, that they cannot force a fight right now. Because pretty much this team fight is going to decide who's going to take the lead right now. Right now, there's uh, I see in top lane, uh, there's a little bit of an advantage in the main wave towards blue, so that's going to start naturally pushing out in blue side's favor right now. Uh, red side just doing some ward clears, just trying to get some uh, easy money right now. Uh, wrong, uh, red side take, um, taking advantage of this, though, and uh, clearing out um, that mid lane turret, so gold's still dead even, only, only uh, 400 in favor of blue side, so this game is still anybody's game. It's just going to be depending on this, literally this next team fight. Um, this farm game, farm game, farm game is what it's turned into. And now that uh, Red Side has made a huge focus, and they've been keeping this all game on uh, vision control around Dragon, even though they've been getting beat now by uh, Blue Side with well placed, uh, well placed, and well timed uh, sweepers. They've been keeping focus on vision games so hard. Mugu's going to simply pick up his blue. Rumble is going to be pushing back that wave. And right now, Maokai and Katarina are going to be able to push in mid a little bit, but with no range, and Ziggs there, Ziggs is going to be able to take care of that. He's a piece of squeezy. Rumble backing right now. Um, not much going on. Just farm game, farm game, farm game. Uh, everybody trying to claw with what they can. Blue side clearing out jungle with the advantage that they have with towers down. And red side trying to push waves back so that way they can have some breathing room. So they can go back into those wards. Because all those wards I was just talking about earlier just expired for red side. And blue side has uh, blue side has their red um, purple side's red area uh, red spawn area right now completely lit up with wards, so they're gonna know. So it's kind of like it's kind of like half and half. Where one side, where one side, it's kind of like they control an L-shaped size of the map, and where uh, purple side also has uh, kind of control of one located area, but. Zig's gonna try to come with a steal right there, but I believe Red Side's gonna get that, and uh, Vay needs to get out of there now. I believe she's just gonna have enough time if Zulu doesn't flash. I don't know if he's going to. Uh, Brahm's gonna find her. Oh, no. Oh! Vayne with the ult, she's gonna try to go in there. But that's gonna be a 1v3, Lucian's coming around the corner, Vayne doesn't know that. Vayne's in a very tricky situation, but with a heal and a active off the Borg, is going to get away, but Valkai with, with the snare, and that is a dead Valkai. That is a dead Vayne, but that was wonderfully well played, and a very good collapse from the teammate, especially from that Katarina and that Valkai, because uh, Vayne was very astray from getting away, but uh, blue side, purple side is gonna take advantage of that, get that top tower, but now, Blue side is leading a push down mid, and but they don't have it. Um, their AD carry is annoying. We kind of believe, uh, yeah, their AD carry is right there. No, their AD carry right there. I'm blind as a bat. They're definitely going to be trading, trading kill for objective for objective. So a very good play on a uh, blue side right there. Ha! <laughs> they just pulled LCS. They left the pink board alive. 
<laughs> but I think they're just gonna give it to somebody. Now right now, Dragon is spawning in a minute and a half. Now that was a very bad call for the red team. They wanted to get the top turret so they're gonna have more map control around the Baron because this is a high farming game, as we mentioned before. So objectives, as you know, is a very crucial part. But with the farm game going on, and a lot of people not really dying, the Vayne got caught out, but she was trying to buy time. Sadly, it was not enough time for them to come back and defend the turret. They had four people, five people up top, when all you needed was one person to finish it off. And, uh, and uh, what, what, what they're gonna do, and uh, what Blue Side is gonna do is they're gonna go ahead and keep Red bottled up into a nose as much as they can, utilizing their AOE, utilizing their team fight, and. Lucian is headed up towards top. I don't know entirely why. Probably just get some map control, just to get some vision, because uh, he thinks that they're going to sneak Baron and Dragon. They're going to go ahead and go back, buy time, regroup, refresh, get their items for Dragon to spawn. They're going to rotate to it as fast as they can. Hopefully, maybe they can catch a pick or start a fight. There has not been an actual team fight in 30 minutes of this game. That's that's surprising. There've only been picks. More sweepers are coming out. More wards are coming up at this time of the game. Zonia's DFG on Katarina still has a Negatron cloak. Now, now she has the Amplifying Tome and a Blasting Wand. If she could be getting Magic Pen, or she could just be holding on to it for just to have an item in there to just to make her look cool. Hey, I have all items. Ha, you don't. So, low scoring game. It's this is very even. Mostly ward kills and ward fighting rotations around the map. But the both teams are playing very cautiously. And they really want to get a pick off. They're waiting for a moment. They're waiting for an opportunity to make a move. Blue side, knowing Dragon Spawn, they're paying for it. Amumu is paying for it. They want to get it. But they're all at Baron. So, and J4 going back, you know, they're, they're having calls. They're having an issue picking the calls. So, they're, they're not quite sure what they want to do. Amumu is mid. They have no vision on the blue side. They don't know what they're doing. But they do know that they're not getting Baron because they need to smite from Amumu. So they're fighting over wards contesting. J4 went ahead and went back, and Blue Team saw it, and they're gonna go ahead and act upon it, and they're gonna keep going, and they're gonna fight for more pressure. Post coming around, Katarina is dangerously close. Some pose out of the way, almost gets condemned into a wall, but it was not in range, only got an auto attack. Monster wave building up top lane on the blue side. You know, as Katarina's rotating that she has wave clear enough to almost take care of herself. Really getting slowed, really in a very dangerous position right now. It can almost be in a 1v5 fight. Blue side started off there in just a little bit, and then they decided to call it off and say, wait a minute. Well, let's bait it out. Let's wait in the bush. Let's, let's, let's see what happens here. I'm going to put saplings everywhere. I'm going to make them walk into it. You know, that's what they're going to do. And it's, the hard part is determining when to act. Both teams have a good disengage. Both teams have a good deep engage. It's just the hard part is determining how you want to do things. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Um both teams, um, this is a game more of respect necessarily. Um, for, uh, blue team is, a, uh, is respecting uh, purple team's ability to disengage their their push on. So they're not necessarily scared, but they don't know. They're they're not sure of a pick. They they don't have a clear focus. They don't have a clear target. They don't. They can't uh, unless they CC lock and they see an opportunity. We, uh, purple side on the other hand. Is very scared of their engage. Oh, well, we have a team fight breaking out. Lucian getting caught out hard, and Maokai as well. Wong trying to follow up the ult to get away, and Lucian providing some follow up damage. But Red Side's gonna be pushing in hard right now, trying to catch this guy's flash burn from both uh, Lucian. Oh, a flash burn and a Lightyear over the wall with very good call on uh, very good play on Lucian, but that's going to be a Red Side Dragon. And that's going to break the gold lead that has been sitting at a dead even for the last 10 minutes because this has been a pure farm game. Even with uh, even with the uh, blue side getting dra uh, b uh, dragons earlier, purple team was all uh, purple team was responding with uh, with a pick and a adjustment. Uh, right now, uh, if, you notice, uh, me. if you notice within the fight though, they saw their opportunity. They took it. J4 didn't. They didn't waste what they could have done. Now they're grabbing control around the Baron. So they had a free dragon. They're thinking, well, maybe I could do the Baron. Oh, wait a minute. There's wards everywhere. Let's not do it. They wanted to keep getting more. But Braum and Lucian have a really strong disengage. Lucian dashes away. Braum leaves to him. You know, now the shift proc from the vein was a really good call. They hit the dragon and dragon turned. But he, lucky enough, had the cooldown to come just up in time in order to take care of him. Now it looks like he's going to start doing some Baron shots here. And while the red team is going to go ahead and back, they're kind of pushed away from the bomb, putting up his shield to stand behind him. 
and they need Maokai to go up there and tank it, because Mumu's not tanky enough. He can't do it by himself, but they can't determine. Right now, they're just taking three Baron shots. So, they're, try they're trying to make up their mind. They're trying to make up their mind. Red Team is trying to find a good way to sneak in, and they have Blue Side has no idea they're sitting on top of Ward, but they realize, hey, this camping thing isn't going to work out. So Katarina is about half the hell dropping her out. Mumu is getting pretty low to himself. So I'm afraid that if Blue Side tries to go engage with an engagement, they're going to die. Now, one more thing I was talking about. If they could get the Vayne, they win. Vayne is a monster. Three in one, BF Sword, Static Shiv, and uh, Blade of the Ruin King. There is, you know, she's going to do some massive damage. J4 going to EQ combo. We're going to back off Marble Ultimate. So he said, hey, we're going to go ahead and go engage. Rom Rom is down. Oh, knocks him out. Lucy's going to go ahead and follow J4. Exhaust comes out. Katarina, DFG, Ultimate's on the way. So King's up, not really reset, reset, but it's not going to be enough to take out anybody else. Vayne still half health. Janna may have fallen, but they they lost uh, they lost Lucian and they lost Katarina. It's a four it's a four to uh, three v four right now. They're able to get a free turret and they're able to back it off and just push away. They may not be able to get an inhibitor, but hey, a turret is turret, a gold is gold. That's what we're referring to earlier. Really. This may be a high scoring game. Janna was a really good call in the ultimate for the Katarina. However, she could not save herself in order you know, to keep herself alive. But she wants to go ahead. She wants to keep going. They did get the inhibitor turret. Uh, Jana, uh, Lucian, and Katarina are still down. They do have time to be able to take it. They do have Bane for it. Now that they have a dead inhibitor, they are at a huge disadvantage to contest Dragon. Or, I mean, not Dragon, Baron. When they get Baron, they'll be able to utilize it, be able to split push top and bot, clear the turrets, and be able to try to force another opening to possibly end the game. It's 50k gold going on right now. We're at 36 minutes in. We're trying, you know, they're, they're trying to just squeeze up any little opening they can, and they're taking every chance. Once again, there wasn't a full engage on the blue side. They didn't have a chance to do it. Red team saw a pick, and they took it. That is the key goal in here. They're also, um, the target that they have found out, Lucy, um, Lucy and at both those engages, has been out of position. Lucian didn't pay for it last time, but he did, definitely did pay for it this time. And it was a wonderful pick from Red Side. Uh, it, with Rumble following up with the ulti immediately. Um, Jana with an, oh, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a good monsoon. Uh, Jana got scared and saw Katarina coming in for the reset. And and uh, what I find a little a little odd and unique, if you haven't noticed, is the sound the sound clips from her just a regular spin and her ult sound very similar so John was like saw Vayne Shumpo in heard the sound clip and she was like uh oh Vayne's uh resulting I need to get I need to monsoon now so she monsoon pushes Cat away but Cat just flashes in I believe she actually blew her flash and then just pops the ult and that's how they got that second kill I want to say all right that, that's my opinion on it no, what happened was you were watching it. You could watch the, Lotus, the Deadly Lotus. She had popped her ultimate. The ultimate did go on cooldown, and Janna used it to her advantage. She just went immediately. Yes, I may have been in panic because Bane was dropped dead as a low. But regardless, she was able to keep um, Katarina still long enough for everybody to clean up on it to where she wouldn't have done too much damage. Now that they're rotating around Baron, they, uh, the fighting is still going on for the Baron pit. Now, Braum with the shield down, most of his damage is going to be logged. Good monsoon block from him. But it's mostly just a disengage. They don't want to get engaged upon, because if they do, Ziggs is far away. He won't be able to help out much. Katarina's gone too, but they don't know it. But also, Rumble's in the bot lane. He's sneaking up. They just realized it's too late. He's taking a turret. They're going to rotate down. You know, they burn the teleport. Well, guess what? They're free to engage now. Red Team is free to engage on whoever they want to, because Maokai is not there. Now, Maokai can't be there. Rumble can teleport back up, because his is still up. He's still good. Ultimates are up. They're probably waiting on Zix's ultimate for good for good measure and Vayne's heal, which is still down. Now, if you also have to consider, Mc Janna has Mikhail's. Vayne gets logged down, she's fine. She has heal. Janna has exhaust. They have enough defense. Zix, with the, um, the, the, the dead cap and the void stab, he will start a lot of damage. He may not have kills. He has 321 farm. Katarina has 382 farm. This is a very high scoring game. I haven't seen farm like this in a long time, except for when I watch LCS. This is 40 minutes in, 40 minute long game, almost an hour, 50k for each piece, for each team. They need to take, red team needs to take advantage of the inhibitor being down and utilize some sort of advantage. But both teams are very strong, very well farmed, very well put together. Granted, Janna and J4 are a little bit low on XP, so it's vain, but it doesn't matter. They have the protection. Ziggs is gonna go ahead and use his long range ultimate to push ahead the super minions. That way, if Blue Side does go ahead and go for Baron. Well, guess what? They're just going to go for the base. They're going to go for the win. 
So blue team has to cut their losses. Do we let them take Baron or do we let them take the game? I was gonna also point out, um, this is a very high, a high farm game, but that Katarina in a, in a game where uh, I believe Ziggs just hit level 17 and Rumble just hit level 16. Uh, Red Side's gonna be engaging on Baron right now since, but uh, faking them out since uh, the blue team's pushing in, they're gonna respect that blue team's coming back in and then they're just gonna ward it off and they're just gonna have a little Baron dance here. But as I was saying, in a game where Ziggs just hit 17, Rumble just hit 16, that Katarina has been 18 for a while. She's been soloing lane and with that almost 400 CS, she has, she's, uh, other than Rumble and, uh, other than Rumble, because they all, um, Purple Team's been only using Ziggle to, uh, clear minions right now. That's, that's all I've seen them do. I haven't seen an offensive Ziggle on Champions in a while. They've been just using it for safe wave clear, which is a good, it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad ult, but the, the only level 3 ult right now that's coming out of Purple side is, oh, we might have a fight here. Uh, J4 taking a Q to the face, but it's gonna walk it off. We might see, uh, is the only level three right now is Rumble and Katarina right now. Ziggs just hit level 18 using his ult once again to clear minions. This Ziggs is just keeping that farm going. But Katarina is, my prediction right now, an absolute monster. She just went and bought a GA for her fourth item. I think almost flat out. Because I didn't, I didn't, I don't even, I didn't even see a Negatron cloak or a uh, chain vest on her. So she bought that GA flat out. So she is very, very confident in her strength right now. Vayne is kind of hitting that, uh, she's getting close to that. She got her, oh, the blue side taking Baron right now with red, with red side backing off. They're chipping at it really, not quick, but you know what? That is bad. Rumble dropping the old cat. Uh, the ultimate cataclysm coming out of the old. They're coming out. Jay is trying to use Campus. Mumble is coming out. Bo. Malkai is going away. He will fall to Rumble today. Here we go. Lucian is trying to do what he can. Rumble's doing the damage. Katarina reaches it after reset after reset. She's going to take out Quad Raquel. Oh, she get the pen touch. She's coming in. Lucian. Oh, no. Lucian's going to go ahead and kill the ace. Still going to go ahead and make a huge push. GA falls on Katarina. Very good play. Amazing resets after resets. Bay was in a good position. Katarina was able to just move out of it and do what she can. They're going to go ahead and go for a push. Braum is not quite tanky enough to take the entire turret, but they're going to do what they can to make doom. They want to get, they want to, they want to, they want to trade off the inhibitor. No, the inhibitor is the best view. Yeah, the inhibitor turret is the best view. They get the inhibitors, it'll be reset, it'll be perfectly fine. Braum is tanking what he can, but however, he will be executed because he took too long. Now Katarina's going to fall. Oh no, she flashes out of the way. Let's see, that, all they had to do was wait for the minions. They have the wave clear, they have the time, they didn't utilize it. Now, it was a bit of a waste of flash, but still, she just got four kills. She just got four kills. That's halfway to a G, that's halfway to her death cap right there. She's almost to full build. Even though it has been a while, it has been a low scoring game. Lucian's gonna go ahead and pop Yomu's gonna head and turret. They're even now, they are perfectly even. Baron is still up for a contestant. Now with the Katarina, their red side has to make a decision. Katarina or die. They have to focus on Katarina. She doesn't have a GA. Her Zonius is down for a while, but it doesn't matter. They helped her out a lot. And DFG, reset after reset after reset, quadra kill. Every Katarina is a monster, no matter what game. She's my favorite champion, but she's also my most hated champion. Aside from Teemo. I hate Teemo. <laughs> yeah, good old Teemo. But right now, Baron and uh, Lucian are a little out of position right now because Red Side, uh, Red Side's clearing out wards right now, but Lucian just drops a green on a... Uh, on Dragon instead of being grouped up with the team. I mean, it's good vision, but uh, I'm surprised Red Side didn't. Uh, Red Side didn't know he was there though. So, but if Red Side had known, that'd have been a huge mistake on Blue Team's part. But it's a good job. They have a ward on Dragon right now. You can see Blue Team swinging Dragon right now. They might want to take the. They might want to take the Dragon now and um, and kind of um, try to see if they can lean gold their way. Try to get Cat her. Uh, try to get Cat's cool build. Try to get this. Um, try to get a. Uh, lock into the Iron Solari on a Mumu and uh, get Lucian with his Triforce because they're all everyone's itching really close right now to their their item. See Lucian coming in with that Dragon Bow. Red team is going straight to Baron, but Blue is gonna know and they're gonna be coming ready to swing and party. If Red side is engaging this Baron, but they do not know Blue side was a Dragon right now. They do not know at all. Now yeah, another noticing the words from the mid lane. They're just gonna go ahead and back off and play it safe. Blue side is going to go ahead and rotate. They're trying to get another good Katarina quad. The Katarina is their main focus. Red team is a big weakness right now. I saw it earlier, but I didn't think it would be much of a difference. They have no guarantee to see on Katarina. They don't have a, hey, look, I'm the owner. I'm just going to kill you, and you're, you know, you can't do anything the whole fight. 
So red team's gonna back off. They're gonna defend their inhibitor as much as they can, but red, uh, the blue side, the, uh, the stud buff is gonna take it out as fast as they can. Great Ziggs ultimate. Too bad it's not enough damage. Hey, that will, the Rumble ultimate coming out. Oh, great EQ combo. Braum disengaged. Lucian using the culling. Kaka is dropping. The Moomoo is dropping. Doing much damage. Staying in the back. Triple killed. Braum. Lucian is going to be safe, but they're going to keep out the chase. Katarina off the side. Unable to have a good engage. And they could not just mutate on it. They could not utilize Katarina's um, damage potentiality. But with most of the cooldowns now, she may be able to sneak in good. The bot turret is being pushed with a huge wave. The, now, notice, red inhibitor didn't fall. They saved it. Now, now they're going to go ahead and take blue side inhibitor and back off. No, this has been a really back and forth game. It's really long. They, they're really tired. This is a game of attrition. Whoever makes the first mistake loses. All it takes is one team fight to win. It's really close. It's one inhibitor, none. Bot turret just fell. Now, blue side is picking quick. Baron now. We need to do Baron now. They have to go back. They have to regroup. We have time for Baron. But they're pinging. Katarina's pinging no. I, everybody's pinging no. Katarina, don't do it, but she wants to get it. They have to do it. They have no other choice. If they don't secure the Baron, it's going to be a good game, no matter what. I was going to say, back to that team fight, Rumble landed up perfect, almost near perfect hole right there. And uh, with the CC lock, with the CC lock from Jarvin, Jarvin hit both Maokai and Rom. But oh, Katarina's car looks like she's going to go in for the reset right now. Red is uh, disengaging off Baron right now with it so low. I mean, Katarina and Lucian might be able to take this. Oh, Katarina with the Katarina! Penta kill! Penta kill! Congratulations! <laughs> wow. I, I see, I saw it happening. She wanted to get the reset. She wanted to leave over the perfect ward placement. Now, one ward that was almost down. This will be game if Braum and Maokai can tank it. They have the health regen. They were able to do it. Congratulations, Stud Muffins. Really good play in the Katarina. That was awesome. I mean, and her GA is almost up too. So she's able to take the turret, nobody else can. That was Red Team 2. They were so close. They had a great one. They were able to keep it going. She's not afraid to take the turret because she has Guardian Angel. She pops the Zonius and removes the aggro. They're going to go ahead and take it. This is a good game. Congratulations, Stud Muffins. You did really good. Team Yellow Mid, I'm sorry. That was a good game. We'll play to both teams. There's no definite MVP. Congratulations on your defense kill, Katarina. Good game, guys. Very good game. This is an example that wards win games here, people. Wards win games. <laughs> that one ward allowed Katarina to get in there and do work. That's all I can say on that. Wards win games. Good job to Stud Muffins.